Hi, in this video, we are going to learn about stationarity in time series. And in case if a time series is not stationary, then how can we make it stationary? What function we can apply to make it stationary? We'll be seeing this in a more structured way on how to identify the function to make it stationary. Now, typically some of the statistical models assumes that the time, incoming time series is stationary for it to work better. So typically what we do is we apply some kind of logarithmic or difference function to it. For example, if you take a Harima model, right? The Harima model contains of three parts, the autoregressive, the integrated, and the moving average. The autoregressive is identified by the P parameter. The integrated is identified by the D and the moving average by Q. To find out the AR and MA model uh, parameter, uh, you will use the ACF and PAC plot but how will you identify the i uh, part of it right that is the integrated part of it uh, which is identified by the d parameter how will you set the value and that's what we are going to see in this video now just a quick uh, recap on what is stationary and non-stationary. If you see a time series is set to be stationary, when the data is centered around the mean, the mean can be uh, zero or the mean can be any number, right? It is, it is constant around its mean. Now, if you see in this case, the time series, uh, the time series has basically a decreasing trend over time, and then it starts increasing. If you take if you take a mean of this time series and draw a line, it should be centered around minus 40, but but the time series is completely up and down uh, then in the, in the mean, right? If you see above, in this case, the data is centered around zero, that is it's constant around a particular mean. That is the first one uh, for a time series to be stationary. It's centered around mean. The second is, or the mean is constant, or the second is the variance is constant. So the variance which is within the different part of the time series is similar, is constant. It is not varying a lot. So typically when we talk about stationarity in time series, that is like uh, strict stationarity and weak stationarity. Now for strict stationarity, strict stationarity uh, the time series need not have a seasonal pattern as well. So if the time series has seasonality, then it's not strict stationarity, but it can be a weak stationarity, right? Now, if you have seasonality in data, you can, you can either make it stationary by applying a difference function, which I will talk about, or you can just use seasonal ARIMA models or profit models or other model to account for the stationarity, right? So this is like stationarity. If you see the top series, the time series is stationary and the bottom one, the time series is not stationary because there's a trend over here. The data is not constant around a particular mean, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the PMD Arima package, which has a function to identify the difference value, what value I can use for the difference function. And I have just imported this kind of, I'm going to show against two data sets, which are non-stationary in different aspects of it. Right. So I am importing the pandas data reader package. Uh, this package I'm importing to get the stock quote in real time, uh, st stock quote of Google uh, from the exchange directly. Then I have a few functions for visualizing data. I have some statistical model test function like KPSS and uh, augmented Dickey Fuller test to identify if a time series is stationary or not. And I'm just importing the PMD Arima package, which I have given on the top, pandas to uh, import the data set. Right. So let me quickly run this. Now, if you see over here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to pull the data of stock symbol Google from Yahoo Finance. I'm giving a start date as uh, 2010 uh, and correct today's date 2020-21-11. Basically, I'm pulling like 10 years of data. So that's what I'm doing. So this will go to uh, Yahoo Finance and pull the Google uh, stock code data. Now, if I run, uh, if I just print the data frame, you can see basically uh, this has the high value, low value, open value, close value of Google stock uh, over the last 10 years, the volume and the adjusted close price, right? Let me just take the close price alone and plot the data. Let's see whether the data is stationary or not. If you see this particular uh, graph, the data is actually having an increasing trend over time. So the data is not like uh, constant around some mean. So in this case, the data is not stationary. But what we have done is we have just identified from a graph whether the data is stationary or not. How can I run some statistical test and identify it? And for that, you have two tests, the uh, augmented Dickey Fuller test and the KPSS test. 
In this case, I'm going to use augmented Dickey Fuller test on the close price data uh, and see whether the time series is stationary or not. So in this case of augmented Dickey Fuller test, the null hypothesis is the series is not stationary and the alternate hypothesis is series is stationary. Right, so I'm going to uh, run this test. I'm passing the close price and I am printing the text stat test statistics and the interest statistics they have is p value over here. So, in case of p value, I'm just checking if the p value is greater than 0 0.05, then the series is not stationary. That means the null hypothesis is true. Else, I'm just rejecting the um, uh, rejecting the uh, uh, null hypothesis and I'm telling the uh, hot made hypothesis is true, right? That's what I'm basically rejecting the null hypothesis. So in this case, let me quickly print the output result. And you can see basically uh, the p value is kind of uh, 0.99, which is uh, greater than the threshold level, right? That is the null hypothesis is basically true over here. And then I I am telling the series is not stationary. In this case, I know the series is not stationary. Now, how can I make the series stationary, right? I have an increasing trend. I have to kind of make it stationary centered around some mean. And typically what we do is we apply a difference function. The different difference function is nothing but I take the current value y of t and subtract it from the previous value y of t minus 1. This is first order differencing. Now, sometimes the series to make it stationary, I have to apply like multiple difference function. So in this case, the second order differencing I can apply where I can do a y of t minus y of t y s1 value. That is our current value and the previous value. And then I also take the uh, previous value and a value before that. So I am applying a second order differencing. And similarly, I can do for third order or fourth order or higher orders. Most of the time, the first order differencing should make the series stationary. Sometimes you may have to go for second order. The going to higher order, the, then that is very rare, right? So now I need to find whether whether to make my series stationary, do I need to apply a first order or a second order or a third order or an higher order, right? So for that, the PMD arima has a function called n diffs. Now n diffs will identify uh, what is the difference I need to use, right? So it, this is basically the D parameter of Arima. So whatever value comes, you can directly substitute for D parameter of Arima. And I would say like run it with multiple test statistics. Uh, here I'm running with KPSS, even though I like, uh, I did ADF on the top. I'm using KPSS here. You can use ADF as well. I am telling use max difference of four and try it out. Internally, it's going to run all the difference and see where the series becomes stationary, but I'm limiting it to four, right? So let me run this. It's going to give me a hand number, right? This number tells this series is a first order difference that I need to apply for the series to make it stationary. But let me test it out, right? So how do I test it out? If you see for first order difference thing, what I'm doing is I'm taking y of t and substating it the previous time series value y of t minus one. And for that, what I'm going to do is I am taking this uh, value, the df close price. I'm creating a rolling window in pandas of size two. Two is basically the current uh, interval and the previous interval. And I'm applying a lambda function where I am subtracting the uh, current value with the previous value. Right. That's what I'm doing over here. And I am uh, basically plotting it. I'm just dropping NA because uh, the, the last value or the first value I substitute basically will be NA, right? So I'm just uh, dropping that value. If I have second order difference, first two values will be NA, right? So that's the reason I'm dropping NA and I'm going to just quickly plot it. Now you can see basically the data is centered around uh, zero over here, right? Uh, so now let's go and confirm back whether this particular uh, series has become stationary or not. Now I have assigned this to a lag underscore Google variable. All right. Now I'm going to pass that to the PMD Arima function again. And I'm going to not pass the close directly, but the lagged value I'm going to pass over here and check whether I need to difference it further. Right now, you you see over here. I don't have to difference it further. It looks like the station the stationarity is the the series is stationary. But let me also run again the ADF test and confirm it. So once I run the ADF test, you can see basically now the p value is uh, e to power minus seventeen. It's very 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 close to zero, less than. Uh, very close to zero. That is almost like we are rejecting the null hypothesis over here, right? So we are uh, kind of accepting the alternate hypothesis and that's why the series is stationary, right? So this is one part of it. 
Now, sometimes you may have seasonality in data. When you have seasonality in data, you can apply a seasonal ARIMA model or in case if you want to make it stationary, let's see how to do that. So here I'm taking a different data set altogether. I am taking the New York City energy consumption data set and all these data sets are available in my Git repo. You can directly go and use this link or download the data set and play around. So let me quickly run this data set and uh, print the value. Uh, so if you see over here, it has the demand, the precipitation, the uh, outside uh, temperature and the temperature itself. These are the three values that are there. I am uh, basically what I'm going to do is now, uh, now this data set has some null values over here for all the statistical tests that you run the ADF or uh, even the KPSS test, uh, the data cannot have null values, right? So I'm just checking if there are any null values. Uh, to make sure there is no null values, but if you can see all the demand, precipitation, temperature as null values over here. So what I'm going to do over here is in this case, I'm going to fill the values. Now, I typically know like my temperature will be very similar to my previous value, right? And the demand in the um, demand in your electricity will also be similar to previous value, right? So what I'm doing is I'm just taking the previous value and then filling it. So in pandas that in the fill in a method that is method called F fill that is forward fill. That means it will take the previous value and whatever is available it will uh, fill with the uh, fill, fill with the same value wherever there is a null and that's what I'm doing over here. I am filling for both demand and temperature and I am printing uh, the details alone. Now you can see uh, basically uh, I have filled the NA value. If you want, you can go and confirm by running this. If there is uh, is null any missing value any. Here you can see basically the demand is false and temperature is false because I filled both of it, but I didn't fill precipitation. It is still as null value. I have not filled anything. Maybe we can fill that as well, but I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to use that column. So now what I'm going to do is I, if you see the timestamp column over here is basically an object. I want to convert that into a date time column to plot the data. So for that, what I'm doing is I'm quickly uh, taking this timestamp column and I'm do, doing a two date time. And then I'm telling just infer the date time format. You can give a format on your own, but you can just infer the date format, which pandas will do it for you. And then I am plotting the data, right? Now, once I plot the data, basically you can see over here, the data seems to be stationary around the mean. If I draw a center line over here, the data seems to be stationary around the mean, but there is a seasonality over here, right? Now, yeah, in order to for it to be strict stationary, you cannot have seasonality in the data. So this is a case where you can use a seasonal ARIMA model, but still you need to know like what function you need to apply to difference it, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is for seasonal stationarity, I'm going to check whether first the data is stationary or not, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I am using a KPSS test. And for the KPSS test, the test statistics is opposite than ADF. In ADF, if you see the null hypothesis works, the series is not stationary, but here the null hypothesis is series is stationary but the alternate hypothesis series is not stationary right so let me run the kpss test on this value and instead of comparing a greater than 0.05 i'm doing less than 0.05 if the series is not stationary because i am doing it for alternate hypothesis right so let me quickly run this and now you can see basically the test statistics is 0.01 and the series is not stationary over here so kpss test the series is not stationary right so for doing a seasonal differencing uh, previously what we did is we took the y of t and substituted with the previous lag either y of t minus one if it's a second order then we go to second lag and third lag and so on but since it's a seasonality you have to subtract it from the previous seasonal period a data can have like daily seasonality weekly seasonality monthly seasonality or even yearly seasonality depending on the pattern you need to select what you need to uh, subtract with Right. So here the data point, if you see on the top that we saw, it is hourly data. Right. I have data for two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. So it's a hourly data that we have. So I basically know I'm taking temperature column and temperature as an yearly seasonality. 
that's what it is right so i have printed the temperature column temperature typically has an yearly seasonality so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a difference function from the previous previous seasonal period that is 8759 points so what is 8759 so so basically what it is if you see over here i have 24 data points a day and 30 days a month and then there are 12 months so that comes to around 8760 value right that's what i have given over here and then i am doing a subtraction so i'm taking the current value and subtracting for the previous value and then i'm just again dropping it dropping that because uh, for the first lag you may have zero, you may have a null values over there because i don't have anything to subtract from the previous right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this lag underscore temp right and then i am going to see how the data looks like now looks like the seasonality pattern has gone after i have taken the uh, lag of this particular value so when when there is a seasonality you need to difference it with the seasonal factor like how what is the seasonality you have your daily seasonality is going to be uh, 24 hours it's like hourly data or if it's a second data you need to accordingly accommodate it right now this is done what i am going to do now is i am going to check if my data is stationary or not after i have done that right now let me quickly go and see this run the same kpss test and see if my data has become stationary now it still says the data is not stationary and what can be the reason even after me differencing it if you go to the graph above looks like even though the data looks stationary there is some variance over data over time the variance is not constant even though the mean has become constant the variance does not seem to be still constant in the data you can see like a lot of like a variance in the data over time so now what i need to do i need to go and check what difference function i need to apply same as before so the, i'm going back to the end if function again the panda sarima and i'm uh, finding the difference function what i need to apply and it is telling apply a first difference function so what i did is first i applied a seasonality difference to make uh, the seasonal data stationary now my data has variance i am going to make it stationary with the first order difference i am applying the same function as we did before i am taking the uh, window of 2 because i have only first order difference and i am doing the yt y to y of t and minus y of t minus 1 right so let me run this um, now i have done this i am plotting it now you can see basically the variance has reduced to lot of extent right it's it's in a confined way not not as much as uh, we had in the previous one right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just assign it to a variable over here lag temp diff and i'm going to check now my statistical text again to see whether now the uh, data is stationary or not so let me run this and see if it's stationary now it says it's stationary right so what i did is i had to apply first the seasonal function and then the difference function so in this video what i want to show is how you if you have a non stationary data how you can make it stationary and when you are give feeding it to arima model typically you don't have to do it when you are using an arima model but when you are using a ar or ma model separately or harma model you have to do the differencing by yourself in arima you can just take this end if parameter that we have and pass it as an uh difference parameter so in this case one was there you will be passing the d equal to 1 in arima model uh, and running your model so this to know what value of difference you need to apply and that's about it thank you very much